Okay. Lesson 7-3 is very similar to what we did yesterday. Um, we're going to be working kind of like backwards. We're going to be proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Um, to do that, there are five different ways that you could prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and we're going to write those five ways on our paper. Um, here's the amount we are writi writing, and I kind of squeezed it down in the bottom corner. So that's where I want you to write today's notes, is right here in the bottom corner of page 607. Okay, so proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, we're just going to write ways to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, first way is that the opposite sides are parallel. I am going to use abbreviations as I write that down. Opposite sides are parallel. Um, and it has to be both pairs of opposite sides. So here is a quadrilateral. And if this side is parallel to this one, and the top is parallel to the bottom, then it is a parallelogram. Then number two, opposite sides are congruent. So parallelogram, and of course it has to be both pairs. So this would have to be equal to this, and this would have to be equal to this. Number three, opposite angles are congruent. and both pairs of angles. So this angle being equal to this one, and then this angle would have to be equal to this one. So each one of these can be used independently. So if you have a situation where you just have the angles labeled, you can say that it's a parallelogram. And then number four. Four is a new one that we didn't see yesterday. It says one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second, but just write it down. One pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So here's a parallelogram. It says one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So if we're told that um, this side is the same length as this side, and that side is also parallel to the bottom, then we have a parallelogram. Then all the other conditions would have to be met as well. And number five. Last but not least, diagonals bisect each other. Here's our parallelogram. The guards on that diagonal there. And here, those diagonals would meet at the midpoint of each of those lines. So this would be the same length as this, and this would be the same length as this. And if those conditions are met, then you know you have a parallelogram. OK, now using this, we're going to answer the rest of the questions. So I'm going to move up to the top. It says, state which theorem you can use to show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, in this first one, it shows that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So therefore, yes, it's a parallelogram because opposite angles are congruent.
number two, it shows that opposite sides are congruent, both pairs, so we can say that this is a parallelogram because opposite sides are congruent. Number three. It shows that this is the midpoint of this line, showing that this is the same length as this, and this is the same length as this. Diagonals bisect each other. And over here, the opposite angles are congruent. Number five is the new one where you have one set of congruent sides and those sides are parallel to each other. So one pair of congruent sides that are parallel. Obviously, once you have one set of congruent sides that are parallel, then these would also be equal to each other. You can just prove that this is a parallelogram with these conditions. But once you prove it's a parallelogram, then it follows all the other rules. And six, diagonals bisect each other. Moving on to the next section, this is very similar to what we saw yesterday. Um, find the values of x and y that make the quadrilateral a parallelogram. Well, for a parallelogram, as you know, opposite angles are equal. So then this would be 114, and this would be 66 degrees. Number eight, same thing. Opposite sides are equal. Okay, and number nine. Now we have a little bit more solving to do. The opposite sides are equal, so we can set them equal and solve for x. So we do 4x plus 6 equals 7x minus 3 and solve. And this is equal to this. Okay. And we'll skip 10 and just move on to the next section. Um, 11, it shows that these t this is equal to this. And also, with this being a parallelogram, this would be equal to this. So you could set those equal and solve. I don't think we need to work through all those steps. 13, again, it shows that these are parallel. It's saying find the value of x to make it a parallelogram. Then this would be equal to this. You would just set it equal. I'm not going to work through all the steps. We kind of get it. Just solve the equation. Same for 12 and 14. You just set them equal and solve for x. So that is it. We'll stop there. Um, if you have questions on your homework, let me know. But it should be pretty straightforward. Um, it is Friday. Make sure your Khan Academy is done and all that. OK.